Hey, welcome to the kneeling show and the, and the sitting show. It's um, the floor show. This is the actual thing. Um, this is a piece we built nine years ago. Give or take. Tear. Oh. Um, uh, we built this nine years ago, and it was just a, a demo piece. This was simply built as something to show people what we were capable of. This is called the fossiform ambigulator, uh, which means fossiform means it's uh, it's got lots of holes in it, and ambigulator because it's ambiguous. We have no idea what it does. Um, we apparently, couldn't find the manual. Right. There's no manual, and it's broken. Um, but the reason we're showing this to you right now is it's a we def built it as a definitive. Victorian sci-fi, aka steampunk piece. Bakelite front panel, all of these. We've got lots of insert shots to show you, so as we describe this stuff, it will go to insert shots. Pretty cool. Uh, this is a Bakelite master control unit. Uh, old uh, double blade knife switch, the old Frankenstein switch. Uh, this top piece right here is a... Uh, uh, it is a lens off of an old Mississippi barge sonar array. That fish gave us. Uh, Randy, actually, Randy? watching. Really? Yeah, it's Randy. It's Randy used to do uh, put on like new tech satellite uplinks. Fish stole it from Randy and yeah. gave it to us. You don't know these people, so you <laughs> don't care. Unless you're Randy, in which case, there's your shit. So as we go around this piece, and we'll do that with insert shots, the um, each gauge is uh, has science fiction jokes in it, or science jokes, or movie references, and. We designed each one. Each one has uh, uh, what it is measuring, and also the units of measure are two different things. Uh, each one of those has little references in it, and we've got our logo incorporated into each one. Each one has a beautiful little Victorian aesthetic. And then we have uh, the opposing panels, which are mechanical. Uh, two of those are uh, clockwork panels, and two of those are uh, other type of mechanical panels. Uh, including this little guy right here with arms that move, and um, they don't move. And uh, <laughs> these are these are bits that we stripped out of old mechanical adding machines. What else? Uh, there was actually one of the really cool ones. It was a mechanical change maker. So entirely mechanically, you would the thing was rusted solid for decades before we got it. But it would uh, automatically mechanically figure out, calculate your change, and, and properly distribute it. You would, a lot of cool guts in that. You, you could type it, you'd basically press in 95 cents and hit a button or pull a lever and it would dispense 95 cents and change, which is pretty cool. It was, a, it was this bizarre little mechanical analog computer though. And we killed it. Yeah, we destroyed the crap out of it. Lots of angle grinding and sparks flying and... Those old machines are not easy to take apart. They don't want to come apart. Uh, okay. Unlike Mark's iPhone, which I would hit with a hammer. Um, uh, now, something else I'll point out as I rotate this guy right here is uh, this gauge insert um, is uh, is done in in leather in uh, in alligator. It's the same as we did the uh, the big steampunk chair that I showed you in the last steampunk video. Uh, but that's that's one of those little touchstones that we've uh, that we've done that we've repeated. So this stuff is on the is on the the sniper on the the sniper case in the gun. It's on the cheek piece of the gun. Uh, which, if you've seen the rifle cheek piece video, steampunk gun video. video thing. Go, go click, there's a button now. Yes, hey look, there's a button for that, yeah. And then, um, so, but this is repeated, and that way all these pieces stylistically go together, They're, as though they were made by the same people, which they were, I suppose. So there, yeah. I know them. The top of the piece is a lens off of an old Mississippi sonar barge array. I didn't get the words in the correct order, but you get what I'm saying. Uh, big, big fat lens, and then inside of there, we have an actual Victorian map of the moon printed on vellum, and there used to be a light in here that would project that up into the lens, but I had to steal the battery pack out several years ago. The neat thing about the way this lens and the map work together is that the uh, is that when it's backlit, that lens, um, the the map of the moon is broadcast over the surface of the lens. So that big. you can, it's a big lens. Uh, it's a, it's a ten it. pound piece of glass. But when you, uh, but even from high rake angles and stuff, you don't have to just look down inside it. It literally prints the moon all over the surface, the surface of this thing, with a really weird optical effect. Um, and it's just gorgeous. I'm, I'm sorry, it's not lit. And we can't show it to you, but it, we built Finger it nine place. years ago. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, just. Uh, 
go through this video again if you can and look back at what we've what we've talked about about applied or I'm sorry uh, parent function uh, implied function uh, because none of these pieces on the side move unless you physically move it with your hand uh, this gauge face lights up and that's it the, the moon lights up it's it's a light switch um, but Put your when you look here. at when you look at this machine everything about it tells you that it's real and that it works that's kind of what this whole piece is all about is that it's uh, is uh, is it sure as hell looks like it does something?